Oh, hello. It's been a while since I've <laughs> done a playthrough of something, but uh, well, now that they've released this Kawabunga collection, I figure I might as well try a playthrough of Turtles in Time. Oh, let's get out of there. Now I'm going to be playing the Super Nintendo version since that's the one I'm most used to. Stop that. So I actually had this game back when I was younger, back when it actually would have been, like, out. It's probably the first game that I've ever uh, beaten on hard. Honestly, back then, I think we used to just play games on easy mode. Uh, I will give myself a little handicap and put the lives up to seven. And player dash onto manual. This will really help when I, when, when I get to shredder. So, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time. Probably one of the best beat-em-ups ever made. I usually pick Mikey. This is April O'Neil reporting. A hey, Shredder, bring that statue back. You bloated beanbag. Big Apple, 3AM. So you can uh, see, it shows you a silhouette of the boss you're going to be facing. That's obviously Baxter Stockman. Now, most people that are have, you know, played games should be kind of familiar with how beat-em-ups work. You just walk around, beat up people, and with this being a Turtles game, most of your uh, mooks are going to be foot soldiers. But you got little objects right here you can kind of hit. Now I, I uh, put on the manual dash. So basically you just tap whatever direction you're moving in twice and then you'll uh, kind of dash. That way you can kind of tackle people like that. Or do that slide and move. And you can see the uh, foot soldiers do come in different colors. The purples are kind of just your regular mooks. You saw those blue ones that kind of had those tuning fork looking things. And there's a the pizza for health. Yeah, kind of got to be careful. Don't want people to kind of flank you. But I should probably get that before it scrolls off screen since you can't go back. We also got this barrel up here you can hit. Whoop. You can see those pink guys throw shurikens. But you can also do that to them. But yeah, playing on the uh, harder difficulty does make different foot soldiers appear like earlier than what they normally would. Now you can see we've got Krang in the background there shooting lasers. Just trying to avoid that. Uh, now you can also see how I'm kind of throwing people. Basically, when they're doubled over, you can like uh, press the. Oops, got shocked. <laughs> but yeah, when they're doubled over, you can kind of press attack and a directional button, and then it'll kind of do a th one of the throws. It's like right there. Little wrecking balls you gotta watch out for. Kind of moves up and down. Now I have uh, done a playthrough of this already on these on the uh, Kawabunga collection. Now I didn't do as well as I normally do. I should probably get that pizza right away. But I didn't do as well as I normally do when I play the Super Nintendo version. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why. The controls feel like the same. It just kind of feels like you take extra damage. Like, I played the Aladdin, the Super Nintendo Aladdin, on, the, on that collection they released, and the controls for that felt a little slippery, but here... Uh, anyway, uh, here we are at the first boss. So he just kind of flies around, shoots at you. Can be a little... Okay, that, okay, that is one problem with the manual dash, though. <laughs> Sometimes I'll run... 
Sometimes I like to only run instead of, you know, trying to hit him. But yeah. I mean, you can kind of see his shadow, so you can kind of tell where he's at. But yeah. I mean, he's a first level boss, not too bad. You can kind of just jump up, try to hit him, or wait for him to come down. But yeah, when I played the Super Nintendo version on hard, I can beat it in less than 30 minutes, but when I uh, did my playthrough here, it took me like over an hour. Hey, I don't even have to say the name of the level. The game says it for me. So now you see we got these blue ones that have katanas. If you leave them alone, they'll kind of jump at you. And as you can see, they'll like sometimes try and grab you. Just uh, hold you in place while other guys beat you up. Now if you look up uh, uh, by my life bar, by the name, you can see that number. And every time I defeat someone, I get points. If you get 200 points, every 200 points basically you get a another life. But yeah, you can see kind of how he jumped at me like that. And now we get some new enemies. If they're far enough away, they'll shoot lasers at you. Or they'll kind of shoot those electric lassos. Though to be fair, when I was playing, when I did my uh, playthrough on this, I was switching the turtles that I used. You can see those orange guys, they'll jump up and throw a kunai at you. I've got more of these guys. Yeah, these guys can be kind of annoying to fight. And this bomb pizza right here, you grab that. You just spin around like that. And you can see that foot soldier tried to throw that uh, manhole cover at me, but I was able to hit it back at him. Also, you will take damage if you fall into that sewer, which, you know, it's kind of weird considering that's where the turtles live. Yeah, I might as well grab that now. Oop. I should have waited a bit. Now you can see those white foot soldiers kind of have those three uh, point staffs. I'm going to mangle you green slime balls. So this is Metalhead. Uh, in the cartoon, he was actually an ally. But I guess he got reprogrammed. Then again, he, that's how what well, might have happened in the cartoon. So you can see he jumps around, kind of extends his limbs at you to attack you. And then every once in a while he'll jump to the end of the screen, just shoot at you while going down. Yeah, one of the reasons why I like picking uh, Mike is because he has uh, his combos do, uh, they kind of last a while longer than the other ones. I don't remember if different turtles have different damage. I think it's mostly just an attack speed and a range type thing.
bonus stage, it's showtime. So yes, in the Super Nintendo version, they kind of turn this into a little... They, they make it way easier than it is in the arcade. In the arcade, these foot soldiers actually have their full life, and... The obstacles do uh, come faster. <laughs> Also, that silhouette that you saw isn't actually the boss in this stage. Want to dodge those pink balls, obviously. Then you got these gates that you want to dodge. Whoop. Uh, now you see what happens when you <laughs> don't dodge them. Okay, now you can see these guys. Basically, they swim at you, jump out the water, and attack. I do not like these guys in Shredder's Revenge. I'm killing a lot more than what I normally do, I will say. Should be another pizza coming up, I think. Yep. And right there, I got an extra life because I won past 200. So now if I get to 400, you know, I'll get another one. And the boss of this stage? Rat King. First of stewards in the world. Tells you where to hit him, basically, but yeah. I do got a full life bar, so I should be able to just kind of wail on him without worrying too much. Plus, you can see if I'm down here, I can dodge those pink balls, though I still got to kind of stay in the middle to avoid his missiles. But yeah, that wasn't too bad. Now, in the arcade version, after this stage, you actually, uh... You actually do get sent back in time instead of going to the Technodrome, which is a stage that they added for the Super Nintendo version. Yeah, this is kind of a weird case where the, uh, home version is actually generally considered superior to the arcade. So anyone who grew up with the uh, 80s cartoon definitely definitely knows the Technodrome. Basically the base of the bad guys. Uh, those guys can be really annoying. And now you can see we got a new type of enemy, Mausers. In the uh, cartoon, they were invented by Baxter Stockman. Just to eliminate rats, but then, you know, he kind of joined up with Shredder. That was actually an early arc in the cartoon. But in the this game, you can kind of see they kind of run after you, then jump up on you. And if they get you, that happens. At least they're weak, I mean, when it comes to taking damage. Uh, okay, good. Now you can see these foot soldiers right here. They can block your attacks. Now these are the reasons why you want to put on the manual. A dash, because you kind of got to dash into them to hit them like that. And on hard mode, well, you'll kind of see when we get there, but... <laughs> yeah. It's coming up pretty soon, but you'll see kind of why you want the uh, manual dash on. Now you can kind of see, if you are getting flanked, you will sometimes attack behind you. But it's just best to try and get them on one side. Now we're at this electric barrier right here, so we get the uh, first boss of the stage. Toka and Razar. Masters say, have fun, fun. Now who are these guys? Well, if, if you've seen the uh, second live-action movie, there are mutants created by uh, Shredder to kind of combat the turtles since, you know, the foot soldiers weren't getting the job done. But they were kind of, you know, <laughs> not smart. 
But as you can see, uh, Toka, the turtle, he's kind of shooting those beams. If they hit you, you kind of get frozen. Oh, Rezar kind of just slashes at you, and he'll shoot fire. There is a tag team move they can do where uh, Toka will kind of retreat into his shell, and then Rizar would jump on him, and they'll just kind of surf around. But as you can see, I kind of was able to stop them from doing that. Uh, I should maybe wait a bit before grabbing that. So now we got the obligatory elevator stage. Go up a level, enemies come out the doors, just take care of them. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, like in a lot of beat em ups, you do have a super move you can do, where if you press attack and jump at the same time. And then like most of beat em ups, it does take away some of your life, so I tend to not use it. As you can see, sometimes they'll try and just flank you instead of... Whoop, got some of these guys. I mean, overall, it's not too bad. Alright, now we get the real boss of the stage, Shredder. Tonight, I dine on turtle soup. Now, with this boss, you can't attack him directly. What you have to do is you have to throw the foot soldiers at them. But you can see, they're the uh, block ones. Whoop. So you gotta dash into them. And then... Uh, then kind of throw them. But he's got that crosshair that you want to dodge. And if you get too close to the uh, front, he can grab you with those claws. I basically just run to one side and then whoop. Yeah, sometimes the dash doesn't want to work. But yeah, when that crosshair goes red, that's when he's going to shoot. Yeah, basically once they're doubled over, just kind of hold up and then uh, attack. And I'm about to lose a life. But I'm also about to gain a life. Look. Come on. Kind of the problem is they can only take so much damage before they just... And sometimes they just don't want to get thrown. I think one more ought to do it. Oh, I got an extra life. <laughs> Come on. Well, double KO. <laughs> so now in the Super Nintendo version, you get st uh, sent in the time warp. My patience is wearing thin. I'm banishing you to a time warp from which you will never return.
So I know a lot of people probably know this, but in the 80s cartoon, Shredder was voiced by James Avery, Uncle Phil from Fresh Prince. Just another in a long line, line of those 80s villains that are kind of ineffective, generally. I mean, I, there were a lot of episodes where he actually was able to beat the turtles on his own. Like a lot of the uh, European vacation episodes, I think he, like, defeated them in most of those. So now we got sent back to the uh, dinosaur age. We've got some ty pteranodons or pterodactyls dropping eggs. Got a little stampede. We should also be getting some new enemies in this stage. This stage also probably has the uh, boss I tend to do the worst against. But yeah, you can see with these, even though they block your attacks, you can sometimes hit them with regular ones. Yeah, even if they block, though, hitting them does kind of knock them away. Oh, now we got some foot soldiers with axes. Now you can see, they'll try and chop you, but if they miss, they get stuck. And you saw one of those stalactites falling. They're kind of clearly marked, so you can kind of tell which ones are going to fall. Those dark blue ones. And new enemies. Stone warriors. Tougher than foot soldiers, and a lot of times they will rush at you from off screen. <laughs> and as you can see, they tend to come in good numbers. You kind of get some variations of them later on, some with like different weapons. Now you can see those yellow foot soldiers threw bombs and then they left. They're one hit, and I believe their bombs actually kill other foot soldiers, so they can be kind of useful. Yeah, you can see that happened right uh, down there. Eh, I'll just use this. That was my special. <laughs> Accidentally did that. And with that rumbling comes another stampede. Nothing too bad. But yeah, as you can see, you can throw these guys, but kind of the same with foot soldiers. You really, really want them all on one side. So now the boss of this stage is Slash. Now his gimmick is you can only really hurt damage him from behind. Your history slime boss. And he's also really fast and his weapon has good range. So basically what you want to do is wait for him to jump. And then you can kind of hit him when he lands. But yeah. Yeah. 
Ugh. I mean, obviously, he's a little easier if you're... Whoops. If you got, like, an extra player, because then you can kind of flank him. So in the cartoon, he was actually uh, another turtle. He was, like, Bebop's pet, I think. But then they kind of mutated him. His shtick, though, was that he had this little palm tree when he was a regular turtle. That was kind of his security thing, so that's what he—that's what his goal was. Was he was trying to get that back? Uh, sometimes he just does not want to. <laughs> Jeez. I will admit I'm doing a little worse than what I normally do against them, but... Come on. But yeah, because you can see even that doesn't damage him. Also, when his life starts to get a little lower, he'll start doing that uh, spin attack. Jeez. This is not going well. Jeez. Yeah, I, I, I seriously think that might be the worst I've ever done against them. I should almost just uh, let myself lose all my lives at this next stage just so I don't have to get far and then have to continue and start at the beginning anyways. Woof. Yeah, I probably should do that. But as you can tell by the name of the stage, pirate themed. This, uh, <laughs> this stage does introduce what is probably the most annoying enemy in the game, though. Also, if you step on those little hinges that you see on the floor, the uh, floorboards will come up and smack you. Nope, not those guys. They're just kind of another one hit kill. They pop up on the screen, shoot arrows, and then leave. I'm sure I'll accidentally hit one of these eventually. Oh. So yeah, I like that. These guys right here. Oof. They got those little boomerang balls that they throw so they can hit you on the way out and on the way back in. And if you get close to them, they tend to kick you. Like, they actually kick you far away from them. Oh. That ship in the background will shoot cannonballs at you, so you want to watch out for those. Well, at least I kind of got kind of got that guy stuck on the off screen, so that wasn't too bad. Uh, come on, I'm not gonna waste it on you guys. I mean, they are extra points if you do do defeat them, so. Guess I just wasted it for no reason then.
Oh yeah, also if you get more than one on screen, they do tend to flank you like that. But yeah, I do not like these guys. So now you can see we got some stone warriors that have guns. As you can see, they kind of smack you with them just to get you away or they'll shoot at the floor. And now we got another double boss, Bebop and Rocksteady. Anybody that's seen the uh, 80s cartoon is definitely familiar with these guys. As you can see, they'll sometimes kind of screw each other over. And they do tend to fight you one at a time. Okay, good. It's when you get to zero. But yeah, overall, it's not too bad. Especially if you can defeat one of them. Because once you defeat one of them, they start fighting each other. So as you can kind of guess from that little circle, this entire s stage takes place on a train. 1885. I think that's past Civil War. You can see you knock that barrel onto them. And now you can see we got another foot soldier type. He's got one of those sickles with the whited ball at the one end. I forget what they're called. It's like Kuras something. Kuras, I don't know. Something that begins with a K. Maybe I should have looked that up before <laughs> playing this. Yeah, with the exception of the slash fight, I'm at least doing better than what I did. Oh, that was really bad. Got plenty of stone warriors coming up though, so. And now these ones got girders. They're kind of like the guns, except, you know, they can't shoot them, but they'll slam you with them and kind of spin you away. Yeah, at least if you can get them off screen like that, they're not too bad. Also, if you see those shadows coming, the barrels are going to drop down, so watch out for that. Yeah. You can see those guys swinging those chains. You kind of know to get off of their plane. I uh, better use this one, these guys. Oop. And 
Now you can see we got a couple of them with bazookas. Those kind of just shoot a little flame on the floor. Okay, I think he's gone. A couple of more barrels. Nice, better grab that just in case. And boss time. Leatherhead. Oh, goody. Fresh turtles for lunch. So you do your little combo on him. He crawls to the other side of the screen. Then he'll either throw uh, the crawdads at you or he'll throw knives. Yeah, he's not too bad of a boss. Yeah, or else, otherwise he'll do that. Then he'll hop towards you. Just hit him when he does that. Just get your hits in when you can. Bet you if you can, as you see, he'll sometimes kind of swing his tail at you. Dropped right on me. And now we're going from the past to the future, or, or past, 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 we're going to the past still. Hmm. Well, they got a few things wrong. Yeah, this is kind of another bonus type stage. Uh, don't think there's enough opportunities for me to get enough points to get an gain another life. Just kind of watch out for those. And now we should have some uh, airborne foot soldiers. They're just flying from side to side. And like a lot of other airborne enemies, they can be kind of annoying to hit. So yeah, I might end up having to use a continue here. I mean, it's not a bad stage to use a continue. It's not too long of a stage. Face the wrath of Super Krang. So yeah. This is Krang's exoskeleton. Yeah, I'm most definitely gonna have to use continue. <laughs> Kind of watch out for that kick. I will say, fighting him with Donnie is way easier. Just because you kind of got that range, you can kind of dodge his attacks. Uh, do I want to switch? But yeah, game over, so now I can switch my turtle. Um, you know what, why not? 
Knight Riders. I guess this way I can show off another one. Yeah, longer range, but you can't get as many hits in with your combo. Oh, well. hey, at least it's better than Leo. His combo kind of includes a jumping attack, so that kind of leaves you open. I got a little higher of a bonus score this time around. Well, let's see how well this goes this time. Yeah, as you can see, it's going way better. Mm -hmm. When his health gets a little lower, he'll start doing a new move where he'll kind of shoot bombs upwards and then they'll drop down. If he does it. Oh, there we go. Let's watch out for the shadows. But yeah, you can't hit him when he's draw actually spitting them out. Yeah, when you're using Mikey, or even I think if you're using Raphael, you can get enough hits in to usually lower the health by one. You're going to pay. Okay, now we're leaving the past and going to the future. Okay, so 2100, still a ways away. <laughs> Maybe they'll get it right. Yeah, I mean, they got 78 years. Wait, 78? Yeah, 78 years. So you can see you got a little Sentinel robot. Not too bad. And now we got these new robots. They just kind of walk around in circles, little shoot a little laser at you sometimes. That range is really useful, I will say.
Well, based on the color of the planet, I'm guessing this is Mars. But anyway, this is actually the penultimate level. Though it is the uh, last full level. Yeah, anybody that's kind of familiar with the NES Turtles game will kind of remember that Donnie is kind of the powerhouse in that. Especially with that one trick he can do with Rocksteady. Yeah, it definitely helps with finding these guys. Sometimes. Uh, there's a pizza coming up. I may as well go... But yeah, when you're on those hexagons, watch out for the lit spa spaces, because they freeze you. I don't know. I just stick to the top. You can still get hit sometimes, but not as much. Uh, got a big green bouncing ball. Watch out for that. I think we've pretty much have seen all the uh, different types of foot soldiers. I'll probably get an extra life before the end of this stage. Oh, I guess we got these two guys. Stone warriors, but, you know, with laser guns. Another stage obstacle. Unfortunately, it doesn't defeat the uh, enemies, but... but... At least it gives you a little warning into when it's going to start up. Huh. I kind of went right through it. Should have a couple more uh, stone warriors. You shall heads are dead. Hey, averting the never say die. That was kind of a, a big trope back in the 90s. So anyway, now we're fighting regular Krang, though he's in this little machine right here. Which can be surprisingly annoying to hit. So he kind of goes around in a circle. Every once in a while, he shoots bubbles at you that can kind of trap you for a little bit. Eventually, he'll also start dropping some of those robot walkers. I mean, I'm not getting as many hits on him as if I were using Mikey, but the fight is going pretty good. But you can, but you can kind of see I was like right on him, but I'm not hitting him. But yeah, you can see they kind of shoot a laser that'll uh, 
restrain you for a little bit. And then he'll start doing this where he'll kind of come down and crush you. But hey, it's a good chance to get hits on him. I mean, technically speaking, you could just let them drop these eternally just to gain points or lives. But I believe that's generally frowned upon if you're going for an actual legitimate high score. He's on his last piece of health, so... There we go. The holes are way home. Let's go. Now this boss fight coming up is one of the main reasons why I like to use Mikey. His combo has enough hits where you can usually uh, take away one of his life bars every time you actually can get to him. Turtle Soup, my favorite. So now we got Super Shredder. In the uh, second Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, uh, Shredder kind of gets some of the ooze and becomes Super Shredder. But unfortunately, he's kind of an anti-climax boss because he ends up taking himself out right away. Now, yeah, you can see in his boss fight, he just kind of teleports around. And then based on the color of fire that he is, he's going to do one of three attacks. The red makes the fire along the floor. Blue is kind of ice waves upwards and then like that. But if he's green, you really want to watch out for that because he shoots out that ball of mutagen. That actually takes away uh, our life, like automatically. But yeah. The best time to get a hit on him is when he does the blue ones. Since when he does the red, you know, you can't really get him. But, yeah, as you can see, getting hits on him is can be really, really annoying. I mean, you gotta be really fast, or you just gotta take a hit. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if I end up getting a game over here, but you know, if I do, I'll just switch back to Mikey. I lucked out, he did the blue. Oh, 
once again, it's, you know, easier if you have a second player, just so you can have somebody, just you can kind of get them in between you. Yeah, all those hits and didn't even take away one of his life bars. Fun fact, in the uh, movie, he's actually played by Kevin Nash. Sometimes I really, really don't like this fight. Yeah, the window to hit him is just so small. Also, it doesn't help that you pretty much have to be on the exact plane that he's at, whereas his fire can <laughs> kind of hit you no matter what. I guess as long as you're close to him. Nope. I'll go back to the original plan. Now, unfortunately, I got to do all that work again. Yeah, see, I already took off one of his life bars. <laughs> <laughs> 